Yo, welcome to another Speaker Geeker podcast. I'm your host, Steve O. Steve, and I'm here with my player partners, man, mine, G <laughs> and Tommy T. I got to emphasize mine. These are my player partners. I don't I appreciate know why. that. I just feel like it. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother. Let everybody right. know. God damn. Uh, yeah, man, what's going on with y'all, man? How y'all been? Good. Been good. Pretty good, pretty good man. Pretty good. <laughs> what's, up? what's up with the pause, man? Yeah, to think about how good it's been today. Yeah, what's, man. What's uh, going on? Man, it's been a busy day, man. I woke up and uh said, nigga, put some chicken on the grill today and uh, you know, really been grinding. Nice. Stay grilled. Man. Nah, I got some, hey man, all I gotta say is coming soon. <laughs> coming, coming soon. soon. This plane right here. Hey. Everything, bro. Stay tuned. Every single thing. All daily activities. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I gotta fire the grill up myself. But man, I love it. Man. What's going on with you, Jay? I ain't got no baby. grill, man. Go get you one, man. Right. I think I'm about to give me a second one. I yeah. might have to do one. I might have to do that. Man. I ain't got no grill, man. Okay. It would be nice to have some some grilled food from time to time. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got nothing. Man. Well, but got Texas steaks, barbecue no, uh, though, is it? chicken. Texas no, barbecue is uh okay. It's hidden with with Memphis. Let's talk about it's supposed to be. <laughs> no, uh-uh. let's talk about Texas barbecue. Bro. Okay, let's talk let's about, talk right about Texas barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> this shit. It's dry as hell. Uh oh. <laughs> it ain't no sauce. Uh oh. Zero. This much. It ain't no sauce at all, bro. I went to go get like a a, a pulled pork sandwich or like a brisket sandwich yeah. or some shit, and the shit was just bread and meat. No, no sauce. sauce. Nowhere to bread be found. I was meat. like, "What the hell is this bread shit? <laughs> How you just gonna give me the bread and the smoked meat, nigga? This is this is not what I want." What's the, um, what's the meat moist? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but you wouldn't. Don't nobody want no fucking hey, bread soggy and bread meat. sandwich. Bread and meat. Bread and meat. No sauce for your teeth. Hey. Hey, man. But hey, I did have a, um, they got this place here called Twisted Grilled Cheese. Okay. And first of all, fire as hell. No lie. Okay. Um, they have this sandwich that's a brisket grilled cheese and they actually it's a black owned restaurant yeah. so mm. they know how to put sauce on their shit like they're supposed to somebody learned something from somewhere because the rest of this Texas barbecue shit is atrocious but yeah, gotcha. that's <laughs> the only barbecue I've had that's worthwhile is really? that one sandwich that's like, it. like have you went to like a lot of places a lot of different areas. I've been to like two or three. Yeah, I've been to like two or three. And I'm just like, bro, y'all tripping. What the fuck is this? <laughs> somebody gonna have to direct me <laughs> yeah, to the, the to actual the place to go. Somebody need to be like, this is this the spot right here. Yeah, because like if I'm in Memphis, I can tell you where to go. <laughs> I can be like, nigga, go to A and R, go to Arnold's, that kind of thing. But I can't tell you shit about Texas, bro. Yeah. I don't know about their barbecue. Somebody, <laughs> someone know. Somebody does. Figure Somebody's gonna comment and say. This where you oh, yeah. first off they're gonna say stop talking about their barbecue. Then, then they're gonna tell you <laughs> hey, where to go. <laughs> hey, you got to remember, I'm coming from Memphis, right, Tennessee, nigga. Right, this is right, right. The, the home of barbecue. Home fuck of- Kansas City, fuck Texas, nigga. <laughs> we bang barbecue. You what know, do you mean? The crazy part is they're gonna be like, oh, he must have went to this place. Like when you in when you in Memphis, they be like, <laughs> he must have went to rendezvous. He be like, man, yep, you know exactly where I went. Yep. Yeah, they gonna man, know exactly where you know went. Yeah, direct yeah. you right yep. where you need to go. Where you need to go, man. I appreciate that. Please, yeah. hey, if you watching this video, please direct me <laughs> to the good barbecue. I'm gonna hit you with the Joe Biden hand. Please direct me <laughs> to the place that I need to go. Because the rest I need of these barbecue it, places are clowns. Man, man, they That's clowns. There they you clowns. go. <laughs> That's way Good too funny, man. Body, man. That's crazy. Right. Uh, man, if anybody, um, man, if anybody comes across, man, we got a got a great interview out there with uh Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Chattanooga. If you haven't seen it, take a look at it. Right now, they're doing a campaign on their Facebook. Uh, thirty mentors in thirty days. Um, check a, mm. take a look at it, man. We get we got an interview on there, man. Pretty much, kind of tell you how that program. Pretty much changed my life, got me where I'm at today, man. Y'all check it out. It's on my page on Facebook. If you can find Steve Smith, I know it's a lot of us. Uh, <laughs> man. But if you go to the Speaker Geeker page, you can probably find me through there. Yeah. But um, yeah. check it out. Can. Let me know what you think. Uh, 
it was it was a cool cool process. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. Here, I take that. I saw I, I saw you, you uh, share it too. I ain't look yeah. at it though. I ain't seen it. Yeah. I ain't been on uh, Facebook and stuff today for real. But nah. I go on there and check it out, man. Yeah, you got a chance. Did you post it today? Uh, I actually posted a couple of days ago, but I updated the um, I updated the actual post. Uh, yeah. My yeah. wife was like, "Yeah, I think you do a better post than that." I'm like, <laughs> okay, she got some right, spam. Thanks really, for challenging me. <laughs> so I went and did an extra. I, I did. Check, a, I did. Check a, your period. Did it. I went about the appearance for. <laughs> It was just a post. <laughs> oh, so I'm, the, I'm the only just one. Just share a little bit more information. <laughs> it just I'm the only one that's grammar yeah. checked on their post, huh? Mm, okay. I grammar check my stuff. I, I don't, just don't grammar check anyone else's. <laughs> 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 my wife be like, run on sentence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. another one. Hey, that's one Damn. thing, man. <laughs> like, like when you watch, most time, ninety nine point nine seven percent of the time, your wife gonna be right. Man, my wife. Most is time brutal. we don't. I'm just suck. Yeah, we don't, don't want to admit it, but you know we have to admit it a little later. We're like, dang, she was right. But that point one percent though, yeah, it's like you just won the NBA championship. Oh yeah, in a sweeping man, fashion. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to milk that shit, man. Right. You got to be like, I'm what? I was what? Say I was right. right. What's today? Yeah, what time is it? <laughs> Say it again. One more time for the people in the back. I'm um, man. I'm going to the end of the year with it all the way. <laughs> you remember that time? It's December. We talked about it in February. You remember right. that time when I was right about this? So you might want to follow me. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's too funny. I think I knew what I was talking about on exactly. this specific subject matter right here. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. The wives. Man. Yeah. So two things. Megan the Stallion on uh SNL this past Saturday. Yeah. Um that was uh I didn't get to see it, but I think it's big um, for the message that she was having on there. Basically, um, she was saying we need to protect our black women and love our black women because at the end of the day, we need our black women. Um, that's one of the what she said during her performance on SNL at one of the performances on SNL. So um, I just kind of wanted to bring that up just because for the last few, four or five weeks, we've been talking about Megan Thee Stallion and uh, the Tory Lanez thing. And then, you know, of course, um, the verdict for the Breonna Taylor um, death had just come out and stuff like that. So um, her message is true. It rings true, I think, um, just because it's important, man. They, they like, um, let me see, I'm reading through this Rolling Stones article because like I said, I didn't see the performance, but um, she pretty much was talking about Daniel Cameron um, is no different than the sellout Negroes that sold our people into slavery. Activist Tamika Mallory says in a clip played in the, in during her performance, um, another audio clip from Malcolm X, um, one of his uh, speeches was also played uh, there. So um, we see that she's really like now, you know what I'm saying? Um, given that using her platform to to provide a message where everybody's expected to. I just wanted to hear what you guys, if you guys got a chance to see SNL this past weekend. I know I always watch it when big things happen or they have somebody on there that I'm interested in. So um, did you guys see that uh, this SNL from this last weekend? No, nah, I don't really no. watch SNL. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No, I don't it's, care like about mature, SNL. it's like it's like mature all that. That's all. Yeah, but I don't really care it about is. SNL. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't really care. No, nah, I, th- I think they <laughs> say so he's like, man, no, nah, I don't care, man. Just no, uh-uh. no, man. Um, I used to check it out, I but you, I don't. I don't be looking at it no more. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I <clears> usually <throat> check it out when like something huge happens, like the debate. I already knew I wanted to check it out because of uh. Jim Carrey. I didn't even know Megan Thee Stallion was going to be on there, um, but I knew Jim Carrey was going to be on there playing uh, Joe Biden. So I was like, man, yeah. I like Jim Carrey. You know, so I was going to check it out for that. But um, just the message that Megan Thee Stallion is actually presenting 
I think is a very important one. Like I said earlier, um, just did you, because you didn't see it, did you nah, see it? I'm gonna watch it later <coughs> on. We uh, uh recorded it, so um, I'm gonna watch it with my wife, with the wife. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you know, I think what is that from? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just it's feel from like somewhere. it's somewhere. I know it's somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where it's from, but it's from somewhere. But um. Yeah, so the message that she was uh, presenting, man, is is, is uh, one of those important messages that I think we all need to kind of like pay attention to, kind of kind of to piggyback off what we was talking about last week. Um, we have to, as Americans, protect each other. You know what I'm saying? And the least protected one out of all the Americans have been the black woman. Because you can look at it like yeah. this, when the right to vote for everybody was um, put into the Constitution, women wasn't included. So still, the black woman couldn't vote. Still, the black woman had to go through racism, you know. So that's all from that one. Um, Another, something else that I saw this week was um, Logic. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but Logic demands Def Jam pay my friends and musicians who worked on No Pressure. So Logic came out, Logic's album, No Pressure, um, came out, I think earlier this year, right? Yeah, it's probably his last album too. So. Yeah, he said he retired off of that album. But um, so apparently his record label, um, Def Jam, has not paid the people that collaborated with him <laughs> on that album. And he was getting text messages from friends, like the people that worked with him were friends of his. And uh, yeah, asking him or telling him they haven't received payment. So um, yeah. that's crazy, man. He put it on Instagram and, uh, you know, showed the messages and stuff like that. Um, that's crazy from a, a standpoint of you doing work and not getting compensated for it. And you probably mm-hmm. and nine times out of ten they got the money. So well, um, I'm just gonna chip in. We gotta be careful because some people don't be reading their deals sometimes and be like, oh, you know, pay such and such. But then in the deal is like they get paid at a certain time, or if they, or if he owe money or something like that. Like sometimes people be you know throwing stuff out publicly to force people's hand. Like at this point, you're like, man, pay him. That, that looks wrong, especially to the public. But if it's somewhere in the contract where, you know, they shouldn't have been, you know, it wasn't time to be paid or he owes some money or he got to recoup or something and all of that, then if it, or if they're going to be paid, it just ain't in the quarter. Like some people, like people got to remember that sometimes people don't, don't get paid like instantly. It'll be like a quarter later. Uh, yeah. You know, and sometimes you know artists that throw the stuff out in the media to force the hand of the label to to do something. You know, kind of put the ball in their court up behind it with some bad press. So we got to be careful with that because we don't know what was in the deal. Yeah. So only thing I know, man, Logic came on on Instagram and was like, "Hey, this, his guy is not getting paid." So um, I don't know. That's something we talk, man. We talk about a lot of stuff when it comes to these things, man. Um. Cause it's all it's all so like there's a lot of technical crap behind the scenes. Yeah. And you know, people like you know, just like uh, you know, when we discussed about the contracts, folks not reading their contract. Mm-hmm. And then publicly you come out with all this stuff, like the whole Meg Stallion issue with her contract, and it's like, yeah, she ended up, you know, getting, you know, with the lawyers and stuff, she ended up kind of I don't know if she got out of the deal or whatever. Uh, but you know, looking going back further, it's like you signed the contract. You know, you got yeah. you need to be educated. But you know, at the same time, you know, people do prey on people and don't. You know, when you're putting a contract in, it's especially if you're taking one from the label. With all of that, it's like, of course, they're gonna protect themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you got to get people to read over that because labels gonna do what they want to do because they they're gonna protect themselves with their contract. You know, so yeah, gotta be careful with all that stuff, man. Gotta be careful. But I am interested to see why his guy's not getting paid. Yeah, uh, who who's supposed to be paying him? Or if he's getting paid, we just don't know how much. Or 
you know, people be getting their stuff garnished now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You got paid. You, you just somebody else took it before you got to it. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see how that plays out. No, I like I when people get their money. Yeah, yeah, I definitely like when people get their money, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that I got um this week, and it's kind of relevant to the whole 21 Savage album review, but um 21 Savage's new album, the sales increased by over a thousand percent from the first Savage mode. Mm. Um I think the first one was released in 2016. Um, and you can definitely yeah. <laughs> see the growth um, and thought process throughout this uh, album that we, uh, you know, we're going to review in a few moments. But yeah, for it to increase over a thousand percent. So we're looking at an increase of 1365% from part one to part two. And I'm getting these from the XXL article. Um, that's impressive, man. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like 10 times better. Right, that's yeah. what you want. <laughs> yeah. That's what you want. You want to put something out one that's time. Like, and when you come back, yeah, you want to move. You want to do more. So um, shout out I to think, him. Uh, I think that the vignette for it. Mm-hmm. From a video for definitely what had a play, and then I think the oh, interview sure. that he had on uh, uh, Big Facts with yeah. um, yeah, DJ Scream and uh, Big Black, is it Black? Big Bank, yeah, Big Bank, yeah. Um, uh, mm. I think that had a part play into play into it because, like, for one, the you know, the promo video was fire. Yeah. Uh, and then secondly yeah. he announced it on there and then like the quotables from just that interview on uh on Big Facts uh podcast were just legendary like him talking about they was asking they asked him specifically about someone you know if they can't you know what I'm saying if they ain't got nothing going on what what advice would you have them for them you know what I'm saying financially he was like Get a job. Like, get a fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it was so it was so real though. Even though it came off that way, he was like, "Man, if you sitting around, you know, what I'm saying in trap, like you, like y'all think it's cool, but really it's dumb. Like y'all stupid. Like mm-hmm. you think it's y'all being crazy, but y'all sitting around all day waving your gun stuff in the trap. But you got to take care of your family. Like if you ain't got nothing going on, yeah. and you can't get your, you know, you ain't you can't get your hustle on, then go get a job, take care of your family. Then you can go to the block and." do all that and I hope people don't don't miss the actual message he was saying by you know what I'm saying the actual antics from him cause you know if you really listen to that a lot of people there's a lot of people out there that just be out there just hanging around BSing when hey man if, if you ain't got something going on if if you ain't going to school if you don't have some type of hustle going on or if you you know what I'm saying ain't just not doing anything man go get you a job man you mm-hmm. might just be a job person you know yeah. So, but I think I think man, I think a lot of that had to play into it because I I think before the week out, I didn't know it was even coming. So yeah, when I didn't I have a clue until until G put it in the Slack. Yeah, that's what that's when I knew he yeah, was working was on something. The top of his week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's when I knew he was working on something. Man. I didn't even know he was doing anything. Yeah, but the fact that that you know people can and and I think the you know we haven't had a lot of music released this year but mm-hmm. um I think COVID the, yeah the COVID it's um, fourth quarter baby <laughs> time to release them records <laughs> yeah um, that train train is like we can't hold on to this shit and, right. and 2021 come around and then we still sitting on these records yeah. Yeah. like I think that's what's happening with that is I, people just like we gotta get rid of these man yeah. <laughs> like well, I mean, fucking people can't go live with them I think some records coming up too so, yeah. I think some records should have been held, like two chains record. They should have held that one. Uh, that's just my opinion because, you know, like there's no homecomings. That's the perfect yeah. homecoming record. I think he could have released that next year and it'd been perfect. Yeah, but I think uh, like what you yeah, said, that's a timeless record. That's not yeah. something you have to put out yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, nah, man. I think I think. Um, 421 Savage, man. I believe that that trailer was the big thing for me. 
was like, dang. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> right. He got Morgan <laughs> Freeman on this thing, you know? Um, but no, nah, just, the, just the genius behind their, their marketing um, for this album, because it, like essentially for me, it was like, damn, I just found out about this. But then, you know, reading the article today, a thousand percent from uh, from the previous one, like from 2016 uh-huh. to 2020, four years, um, you were able to do ten times better than you did on the first shot with this uh, with this album. So I mean, like, that's nothing to like. That's not a small thing. That's huge. You know, um, because your journey has has paid off. Like your your marketing throughout through those four years, the albums that you put out through those four years, the the music, the tours, the things that you've done has really started to pay off for you. So, um, kudos to him on that one. Um, did you guys have anything before we get started? Oh uh, man, uh, real quick, he gonna be debuting at number one. So I think yeah. it's supposed to move between 195 units to, let me see, let me make sure. I think 105, 195, between 195 units and I want to say about 200, 205. Man, stop be tripping, man. I'm trying to get the dang on. Yeah, it's somewhere in between. I know I read it earlier. I got the article up now, but complex website, B. Yeah. I don't know why it ain't loading like I needed to. Uh, but yeah, he's supposed to debut number one. Oh, here we go. Uh, between 170 to 195 albums, uh, which is equivalent to units in the first week of 14,000 to 17,000, will be in tra- uh, traditional sales. For comparisons, 2016 Savage Mode uh, EP peaked at number 23 on the Billboard 200 charts. Uh, 21's most recent solo album, 2018, I Am As I Was, ranked in 131,000 album equivalent units to 18,000 in pure sales during its first week. So even though, you know, uh, despite last year's album, you know, uh, well, no, no, he dropping more than, well, yeah, you take that for what it's worth. But hey, he coming in at number one on the Billboard 200. So shout out to, uh, shout out to that man right there. 21. Yeah. yeah. 21. 21. 21. <laughs> They might need him a, a number one album. That's what's up. And he yep. got it. Yeah. Cause that's that something put on your resume right there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I saw years ago um, when uh, I think it was Jonah Hill was in Wolf on Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. And it was like Jonah Hill will forever be known as Academy Academy Award nominee Jonah Hill yeah. from now on. He won't just be Jonah Hill no more. Yeah, now you'll be 21 Savage that has had a number one album. Yeah, Grammy like, winning. That's under your belt now. Grammy, yeah, absolutely. Grammy winning as well. Right, right. Yeah. Man. That shit, that shit does it, yeah, right. something different it for your resume something. as far as like what you can command <laughs> when you come in the building and start <laughs> negotiating for money and contracts. It's like, nigga, this is what I've done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's big, especially for him. So shouts to twenty one. Shouts to him. Yeah, who would have thought, man? Yeah, I know, right? and he did. Whenever he came out twenty sixteen, who would have thought? He did. <laughs> oh um, <laughs> Greg, you got anything before we get into this album? Not really, uh like unrelated to music. Definitely if you have it, like Tommy, go check out uh the social dilemma. It's a documentary drama on Netflix. Go check it out and and uh, tell me what See, you think. I messed about up that. y'all out here with all yeah, this social tell, media. Yeah, God, yeah tell me what you think about that, please. If you're if you're watching, please come to the <laughs> comment section and let me instantly G let me know what you thought of that uh, documentary drama and how fucked up they got you out here. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's how I got there. Oh, okay. Sounds like a plan. Um, so let's jump into it, man. 21 Savage. 21, 21, 20, 20, 20, 21. 21. Pussy. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> uh Savage Mode 2, man. Um yeah. let's start here. Let's start with the album cover. <laughs> Fire. What, what was what was the initial thought about the Fire. album cover? Fire! <laughs> yeah, the job was absolutely great. It was yeah. everything it needed to be. 
That's yeah. the thing is though, like <laughs> with him not like with us not really necessarily anticipating an album coming. It's like everything that hits you by surprise and then it being good hitting you by surprise, yeah. <laughs> it just works in his favor. Yeah. It's like, we didn't even know you had an album coming. Then you put out this album cover. It's like, oh, the album cover's fine. And then it's like, we didn't know you had an album cover. Then here comes the trailer. Oh, the trailer's fine. We didn't know you had an album cover. Then Morgan Freeman is narrating the trailer. Oh, okay, that's what's up. Then you turn on the album. More than three minutes there right now. Yeah. Oh, man. And then the first record that drops is like, uh, oh, this where we going? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Let's go. Exactly. Let's go. Uh, man. Yeah, yeah. I agree when they're with running, you, man. come on. Oh, yeah. I agree with Go you. Ahead. Like, it, it took all, like, it was nothing to expect. So it took away all our expectations. So mm-hmm. it had nothing to do but be, you know, listen to it without any expectations. And I know I've said that a lot that I tried to do that. So this just made it easy for me mm-hmm. just to kind of go in, just listen to the music, enjoy the music. And, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what I, exactly. <laughs> it was funny when I saw, actually sat down and paid attention to the album cover, I started going back thinking about uh, No Limit. Cause you know all mm-hmm. their album covers mm-hmm. look like that. Um, Cash Money. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember who was the ones that used to change the color of their album. Uh, like the CDKs used to the be like package. blue. That was no limit. That was no limit. So yeah. that's what. Remember, that's Snoop, what I, Snoop Dogg had that. It was called the Jeweled Case or something like that. Yeah, it was a special like name that. for the case. Yeah, like, yeah. it was like a. Um, yeah. I know Snoop had one. His was like blue, and then uh, Get O D yeah. was one like that. No Limit did a lot. Um, yeah. like that so it, it was no limit who did that so so I, f- I felt like you know if if we was to go buy the CD like that's what type of cover it would be on it would be red and on the back it, it would have oh, yeah. an insert on the inside of it like I feel like that's how it would, <laughs> would definitely be bro um, yeah. but no I, th- I think man him coming out with that with that album cover putting you already you like you don't have an expectation for it but you see this album cover, and the first thing you can think is, damn, that look like No Limit. Damn, that look like Cash Money. You know what I'm saying? But it's 2020. Mm-hmm. That's 20, 30 years mm-hmm. ago, 25 years ago for the last time we seen an album like that. So um, that really made some anticipation because, I mean, for you to be pulling from them, you got to have some heat. You know what I'm saying? From the classic, like, covers, you got to have some heat coming with it. So, um what were some of you guys' favorite tracks on the on the album? Nigga, run it. Run it. Yeah. Run it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's the other one? It's called... Uh, what's the next one that I was talking about? So I'm going to start with a B. I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> is it... Um, I like Snitches and Rats. Yeah. Yeah, Brand new man. Draco. Brand new Draco. Yeah, I like that. Joke. Yeah. Brand new Draco. Snitches and Rats. Uh... Running, I like my dogs because he started talking about being from niggas finding out he was from born in the UK. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that shit was hilarious to it me. It was. <laughs> um, man, man said talking about me being from the UK. Like these choppers still ain't gonna spray spray or something like that. I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> shut that little shit up. <clears throat> yeah. And I like uh, no op left behind. Just yeah. the, the titles of these fucking songs. As a trip, because it's, it's, it just lets you know exactly where he is. It, it goes perfectly with the theme, Savage Mode, too. Because mm-hmm. um, none of these titles don't sound dangerous. <laughs> none of them. <laughs> Every last one of them running, Glock in my left, <laughs> real nigga shit, slide, mini men, snitches and rats, mm-hmm. my dog, stepping on niggas, brand new Draco, no op, no op left behind, <laughs> RIP love. Say it Come down. on now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. They do, they definitely sound dangerous, bro. <laughs> yeah. Man, um, Steve, what about you, man? What were some of your um, favorites in this in this one? For me, um, Mr. Right Now is one that sticks out to me. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think which one was the record where he was talking about where he couldn't get, he didn't have a social security number, so he couldn't get a license. That was, but he uh, went and made it happen. Uh, my dog. I think that's my dog. Yeah, that's my yeah. dog. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's my the dog's same one with the UK shit. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's it. That's the UK one. Yep, my dog. My dog's is probably my favorite record on there. 
Um, and then I come back with Snitches and Rats. Uh, yeah, my dog is my favorite record. Uh, for the first time, we heard him address the whole yeah. London situation. Yeah. And yeah. also him, he, he went, like, I think on that record, it was a little different 21. Like, normally, you know, mm-hmm. 21 is kind of closed out. He don't really talk too much about himself. Yeah. You know, like his life. Uh, I mean, he, he does, but in this sense, it was different. It was him kind of giving you that. Like, uh, that was real personal. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I enjoyed my dogs probably the most on the album. Yeah. Uh, behind that, Snitching and Rats. Uh, interesting thing about Snitches and Rats, a lot of fans think he's talking about 6 9 and yeah. he, he cleared it up that he wasn't. He was talking about any all the snitching that's going on lately. But he did so, say it, it it can apply to... Of course, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, talking about yeah. all the snitching. Like the shoe fits, nigga. Yeah, the, the biggest snitch on the fits. block. <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for sure. But, man. yeah, man, I, I re- really, really, really enjoyed... Uh, really enjoy my dogs that, yeah. that's probably my favorite record because I get to hear 21 for 21 yeah. Uh, yeah there was one other one that threw me off I think it. I think it's strapping my, no no I don't think it's strapping my lap uh, what's the one he talking about he prayed to his Glock I can't mm. remember which one that is I can't remember which one that is that I'm might be sure. Glock in my lip that might be but well, he like let me see because it'll be in the lyric Damn, it's a lot of uh, the word pussy in this thing. Man, I, yeah, it's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, but man, even though that song was fire, like he threw me off with, like he played it, he played his strap. That threw me, that threw me for a loop. But it's twenty one. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's 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 this one. You pray on your knees. I pray to the, to my strap. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's the only one that like threw me for a loop. Um, other than that, man, I, I enjoy pretty much pretty much everything. Uh, Mini Man, I definitely enjoyed. I think I think it was at yeah. one point in time we were talking. I was like, man, I'm at Mini Man like right now. <laughs> uh, interesting yeah. fact about Mini Man: they said he said he dissed Jeezy in there, which is interesting because I didn't catch it the first time. So, Did he though? That's what that's what uh, Derek said. I still yeah. don't believe it. I don't think that's the case. I think it just happened to be the uh, the ad lib that makes it sound like it's a diss. Yeah, I, man, I don't know. I'm, I've been looking up information because I'm like, ah, oh, man, that suck. I hate for them to do it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they try. They broke down the verse on basically said he don't squat, and then of course behind it is you know uh, the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing that stuck out to me on this album, and it wasn't even from Twenty One himself, but the fact that Drake came out saying that he dated SZA, I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> that caught uh, that caught me uh, so off guard. I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> like I dated SZA in two thousand eight, and I was like, well, I be dope. <laughs> One, uh-huh. I, you know, I don't care about the information. It's just the fact that oh, okay. he actually came out and just said it like boom. So uh, I think that Twenty One pulled something out of Drake that yeah. you know, he wouldn't normally do. Cause I don't think on his album he would normally like say anyone's name like that. So it's interesting. It's just you know to see um, to see someone or someone else you know and and how that the theme. Yeah, absolutely. So and she unfollowed that mind. So. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> but just to see how people change when, when they get on other folks' album, or how uh, someone else's energy yeah. can bring something mm-hmm. else out of you. Because I ain't never heard Drake say no names. Uh, so this kind of guy, I don't know why, but I got kind I'm, I'm not a Drake fan, but I got kind of <laughs> hype about it. I was like, okay, Drake, these guys, he's out here showing some balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Scissor, though, so yeah. I don't know what's going to happen behind this, but. We'll see. Yeah. Caesar's gonna it drop it a, yeah. a diss track on Drake. Yeah, you better hope he don't get at his ass. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's what you don't want. <laughs> All right, right. All right, right. Drake, that's what you don't want. Y'all mess with they little sis, little sis, and get lyrically slaughtered over there. Man, yeah. man. So we'll see where that go. But there's a lot on here that, like, I want to see mm-hmm. where the whole Jeezy situation go. Mm-hmm. I want to see what a Drake and Scissors situation go. But other than that, man, Metro Booming Times, Twenty One Savage is hey, it's greatness every time. So yeah. 
Yeah. Keep that. Keep yeah. that energy. Um. Well, y'all, y'all pretty much said all my favorites, man. Um, I'm just run through them real quick. Running, um, Mr. Right Now was one of one of my many men. Snitches and rats. Snitches and rats <laughs> probably my favorite one because it's really bumping. Um, mm-hmm. The interlude, though, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I was, <laughs> like, dude. The I love flow, the, the flow of this album was so great. Mm-hmm. Um, like, practically, he had God on the album. <laughs> Uh, narrating the album, man, because uh, yeah. Morgan Freeman played God and uh, Bruce Almighty, um, in that movie. So, um, the fact that the voice, the the infamous voice, because you know Morgan Freeman, you can you can he has that voice that you like. That's it. That's the one. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, for the for him to actually narrate this, and this something that. I saw like somebody was talking about it and then like I actually paid attention to it. The intros that he do are seamless. Like the songs are very seamless and it's and it feels like you're listening to one or it feels like to me that you're listening to one song, but it's like changing. You know what I'm saying? It's like one long song, but it's it's mm-hmm. like flowing so so smooth, like you you're watching a movie. A little bit, uh-huh. and I think that's yeah. the way he wanted it to go. Um, just as uh, as as far as like how smooth it is, you know, and in running into each other. So, um, my thoughts on on that whole part was like, damn, how did they seamlessly get it to where? Because I don't think I ever even paid attention to this. Um, the intros to the songs, like the snitches and rats part was so perfect. It's like you got many men and then Morgan Freeman starts to talk about snitches and rats, uh-huh. like explaining what a snitch is and what a rat is. And then it goes into the song and it's like, damn, where, where, like, how did all this happen at one time? You know what I'm saying? Like when did many men go off? <laughs> you know? It, it truly depends on your engineer. And I'm sure G... Uh, G would tell you that just how your engineer is able to slice and you know what I'm saying put everything together seamlessly uh, I actually saw an interview and it actually it's from the big effects <laughs> once mm-hmm. again where, where he had the interview and he, he basically said, he said uh, some people just throw a bunch of songs together and put it out but the way me and Metro do it everything matches up it's like Metro scored well he said Metro scored the shit like a movie you know uh which in this yeah. case it definitely he definitely wasn't lying into your point. I mean, that's exactly what what Metro did. Uh almost as if he wrote all the songs before Metro did the beats. Yeah. And man. And like perfectly. <laughs> that's an underrated that's an underrated format for making music. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. to write it first and then make your music to what you said. Yeah. Uh, to kind of capture instead of trying to do it the other way where you trying to write and capture the energy of the, the music yeah. and try to go in the direction that the producer made. Like if you go in the direction of the person writing it and then take your music and apply it to what that person said, it is. It's like scoring a film. It's like the, uh, I don't know if y'all ever seen the documentary of Quincy Jones that was on Netflix, Netflix a while yeah. back where he was talking about how much time he was spending scoring films and things. Yeah. Like, it, it challenges the the producer to become a lot more creative as well because now they got to work around some of your cadences and, and mm-hmm. where your your syllables are hitting so they can't just go in there blindly with any beat they come up with off the top of their head. It makes it a different original feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, crazy. yeah, man. Like, dude, I just wonder, like, the conversation had to talk to Morgan Freeman or the, <laughs> like the thought to be like, man. Let's have Morgan Freeman on him. <laughs> like, I really wonder. Man. I really wonder if it was just management talking back and forth, or if he was really like, you know, his voice. Hey, Morgan, I don't know. I don't know what he right. was saying. Right. How he was saying. Just like, <laughs> I want to hear that call. I want to hear Man. the phone call between Twenty One Savage and Morgan Freeman. Right, right. It, it probably was the simplest <laughs> question, like, "And hey, you want to be on my album?" <laughs> uh, just the simplest question and we think it's so difficult it was probably the simplest thing uh, man but, it, man. but it's, it's like the odd couple man you would never picture Morgan Freeman 
narrating the 21 Savage album. Like, period. Man. They wouldn't even be in the same room. But uh, it don't seem like it, but what shit. Like, it right. happened. But uh, can you imagine <laughs> them in the studio together? <laughs> or do you think Hell no. or do you think Morgan Freeman just recorded his parts and then just sent I him hope him. he came to the studio. I hope so. Like man. I really do. I hope they was like, this is what we want you to do. We want you to go in and, and I hope he wrote all that shit himself oh, too. Oh man. Some of that shit was perfect as fuck. When he was talking about like whether you're from the savage lands right, or right. from a booming <laughs> metropolis. I was like, this nigga is killing this shit. Right. Right. <laughs> I'll I be honest, like I wouldn't be surprised if he actually was there. Like once the whole album was done, if he was actually came in like on the tail end yeah. to do just mm-hmm. the voiceover, because I mean, as an actor, you know that they have to be in certain. Um, from what I've heard from actors, they have to be in a certain mind frame to yeah. actually even perform. And once they're in that mode, they're there. So I wouldn't be surprised if Morgan Freeman came in once the album was done, listened to it, and it was like, okay, all right, I'm ready. Let's. You know, just do the yeah. do the interviews yeah. here and there. He had to have done it when mm-hmm. it was over. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, man. We know if you look back at the the characters that Morgan Freeman has played over the years, yeah. he, he's he's you know uh, he he's definitely perfect for it and definitely able to pull it off. So, man, I, I really do want to know. I hope he comes out and gives us that like right that whole right. interaction experience <laughs> like, at some point. <laughs> Like, yeah, he just called me and Mr. Joe Clark himself <laughs> came in and did they the call me Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen that, G? Yeah, I say he leaned on me. Man. Hey, that, hey. I, I went to Eastside Elementary and when that, you know, the, the school in there was Eastside High. Yeah. I just, hey, I don't know Man. why. Eastside. I just felt like I was there. Uh-huh. I was nowhere near it. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, who told y'all to change that song? <laughs> Bruh, but whoever was thinking about that, like they hit it, <laughs> they hit I'll it. Nail on yeah. yeah, they hit it, man. Because I mean, like I couldn't even picture anybody else being there to capture what this album was capturing, um, yeah, and stuff. Is it like honestly, man? I'm not gonna say it's a peak album for Twenty One Savage, but I will say it's definitely. Um, you can tell, you can see the growth in his delivery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can see the growth in his comfortability, um, his confidence in what he's doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can see all of those things in this one album. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Metro Boomin. Um, Metro Boomin wants some more. <laughs> um, just because he's he's actually, it's a, it's a partnership between them. And I think Mm-hmm. Me personally, I get lost in sometimes like, hey, it's a 21 Savage album, but it's the partnership between 21 and and, and the producer Metro. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more about his side of things, because like you said, Steve, um, in that interview, he was like he scored it, you know, like a movie and everything like that. The genius behind him, you know, what is it? Uh, Metro Boomin wants some, you, you know, he got another one, too, don't he? Um, if you're Metro, don't trust you know, you know, right, right. <laughs> Just the genius behind him and the hits he's had, he has produced. Um, he came with something on this one. Like um, me and G uh-huh. was uh, watching the the running video earlier before you jumped on, Steve. And this was the second time I watched it, but G pointed out that he was wearing a three six mafia shirt. I was like, damn, that's what it is. Like the song, like we uh-huh. talked about um, the other day. Three Six Mafia got this like horror, like feel uh-huh. to their music. This whole mm-hmm. album had that horror feel, but everything was banging. I mean, like, yeah, like I don't have no twelves or or, or, or subs in my man, car, man. I but bet it, you wish you do right now. Still had my mirror <laughs> shaking and everything, man. You know, but um, now nah, I just want to kind of speak on like how y'all feel about like the production side of things with, with the music and everything. 
Go ahead, yeah. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> I thought in my head, they looked on his face. He was like, he was like, you want? Yeah, right. Yeah, I, was, I was waiting. Hey, I got it. I got it. If you don't want it. I mean, yeah. Hey, we can go back and forth. Y'all nah, so polite, I, man. I think, <laughs> I think the... um. We need a t-shirt that say y'all so polite, man. Because hey, they say that like every episode. I know, man. <laughs> hey, 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 print it up. <laughs> print say it up. Less. Say less. Um, but I think that I think that it was perfect. I think you don't get no better than this. And with the relationship that they have, I think that this was bound to happen where you would have something that would explode like this as far as production wise of him being able to capture. I think that for me, even in even in just talking about regular business, I think when you know the person you're working with, it's mm-hmm. easier to to capture what they're trying to do. Yeah. So with them doing having so much history. And then with uh, 21 coming to him for this one specifically, I think that he was able to capture his vision instantly. And going back to how it's kind of, you know, that 3-6 Mafia shirt, which I haven't seen him run the video yet, and I'm glad you brought that up because another another group who did those album covers was 3-6 Mafia. They had those type of albums They did, they did. They did. Yep. And also with the whole theme of this album, if you take a look, he dropped it perfectly in October. Mm-hmm. To capture uh-huh. Halloween and everything, yeah. like everything they did with this album was perfect. This is this is catching lightning in a bottle. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that what contributes to him having a number one. But going back to the product production wise, I want the Metro Boomin interview, man. I want to hear it. Like, what was it like with him in twenty one? to put this together because this was a whole different type of process mind frame this was something this was just banging from front to back and I, I wonder how many beats did they go through before they got to the right one yeah um, how long did it take to make this album what was it like what was that chemistry was y'all completely locked in uh we already mentioned Morgan Freeman did y'all bring how did y'all get Morgan Freeman in on the back end was it just y'all two locked in were y'all in the same, especially with COVID going on were y'all in the same mm-hmm. place uh-huh. mm-hmm. like what was it that like give me that raw and cut because the work that Metro Boom and put in on this album just the production alone to is it, it's just incredible in the way that they put it together and really capturing the vibe the feel of not just the album but the entire month of October uh, and also, like I think we've talked to, we've well, we haven't talked about it before, but I believe in dropping stuff in seasons. Yeah. Like some music feels like the fall. You know what I'm saying? Like the fall yeah. season. Uh-huh. Some music feels like okay. Yeah. Like I would want Drake to only drop in the fall, like <laughs> or the winter. One of those two. Don't All drop right. in the summer. Or nothing. I don't. I don't want to feel. I don't want to feel what you feeling in the summer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like only drop in the fall in the winter. Uh, for this album, for Metro Boomer to ca- to capture not just like the month of October, but capture the season. Like you're gonna listen to this all the way out to December. Yeah. Period. Uh, it's just extraordinary. So I really want to know what the mind frame was, but the use of from the 808s that they use to just the uh, snares uh, that they use as well, which is perfectly placed throughout. Um, and one more thing that kind of came to mind was. Thinking about how music is right now, I don't think we have a lot that has that those hard hitting 808s. So I think they took advantage of the lack thereof of hearing mm-hmm. a lot of beats like this. Like we haven't, I haven't heard any beats like this in a while. Most of the stuff I've been listening to have been just people spitting with those, you know, what I'm saying low key beats with the, you know, symphony or the the with the symphony or the instruments or the you know samples like this right here. Yeah, they just took it. <laughs> they just took it back to the streets, man. Just right. period. Like it was just hard hitting. Yeah, read the whole album. <laughs> yeah, the whole Good album. <laughs> so I, I believe they definitely took a uh, took advantage of what's lacking today mm-hmm. in a lot of music that we've been listening to, and took us back to what what we wanted to hear. That mm-hmm. you know, that Cash Money, Three Six Mafia, uh, definitely Three Six Mafia type of sound. So, well, definitely, man. Greg, what's your thoughts, man, man, on the on the production side of things? I don't have anything like extra to add for real. I think Steve wrapped it up very well. I think everything that he said, and some, but something that I thought about when you were talking, Steve, is like those hard hitting eight oh eights. I hadn't really paid attention to the fact that 
Like the music that I'm normally listening to now is lacking those uh, the same way that it once did. Um, I think it's even the way that the, the AOAs are kind of crafted now. Um, when I'm when I'm using 808s to make a beat, the the newer stuff that comes out, the newer sounds that come out, they they don't hit the same way as mm-hmm. like some of the older sounds that I have. Some of the older sounds I have to go to that specifically if I want a certain knock to come out. Like I have to go to that specific sound instead of going to something that I might have gotten more recently. Some of the more recent stuff is it's like it's like they took the sub bass out a little bit and it's more of like a, a punch than it is like a, a hit like a like a shatter like a, a thunder it's more mm-hmm. like a, a punch and it, it it's it's kind of west coast 808 sound kind of uh too shorty like kind of bouncy 808s like that mm-hmm. um but then you think about the people that had those thundering 808s and it is like the three six mafias or even if you go into like the mid two thousands with like fucking uh, Thug Motivation one hundred and one mm-hmm. with like them shouty red ass eight hundred eight and shit like that, like it, this is what that's what this sound reminded me of. So it's like ironic that they were somebody who was dissing Jeezy because I'm like this shit sound like Jeezy in 05. Nigga. <laughs> like Ooh. it sounds it sounds just like that. It sound like. I don't give a damn what y'all niggas doing. I'm here to tell you this shit about my shit. <laughs> this is how I'm living, nigga. And it's so it's so unapologetically street. Like everything that 21 Savage says is so street and gutter for no reason. It just it's ridiculous. <laughs> Even mm-hmm. with the UK line where it's like, uh, I'm finna pull that shit up. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I was just like, bruh. That's the perfect way to address that in 21 Savage form, bro. Oh, he said, uh, okay, you niggas keep talking that UK shit like I don't got AKs. Like as I was born overseas, these motherfuckers ain't gonna spray spray. Like, that shit, that shit sounds so perfect, bro. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I ain't yeah. gotta say nothing else. It's like, ain't shit changed, bro. I still shoot your ass. Like, <laughs> right. and these other niggas with me, I still do it too. And, and then know. with him okay. coming in with his new ad lib, which I saw uh, a stat <laughs> the other day from this page I follow called Hip Hop by the Numbers and they were saying that this is like the second highest usage of the word pussy in a, a rap album since like Lil Wayne and I was, I'm thinking I'm like Lil Wayne was using it in a totally different way right <laughs> right he was not insulting people by saying pussy on his like yeah. 21 Savage is using it as an insult throughout the entire thing he just steady calling somebody that the whole damn album and I'm like, I'm glad I wasn't the person who was the engineer who had to like continuously <laughs> listen to this over and over again. Right. Like, because I'm like, bro, hold up, you ain't finna just be calling me this shit all day. <laughs> but it, that's what I get from the production side. It just Metro Boomer was crazy with it. Yeah. He really did. He really went crazy. He, he did a great job of scoring it, using the perfect sounds. I've heard it was either him or Twenty One in the interview that was from the past where they were talking about them two working together. And um, I want to say it was Metro Boomer. And he was saying, well, you know, 21, he liked that dark, like mm-hmm. sinister sound and shit. And so I already know exactly what he liked to hear. So I just, when I make beats like that, I tailor making them for him, basically. Um, and they they fit perfectly, man. Yeah. It, it's a totally different sound from the one that was before this, his album before this, uh, I Am Greater Than I Was. Because yeah. mm-hmm. that one sounded more like an eclectic mix of beats. It mm-hmm. was like, all right, I got this producer I'm working with, this producer I'm working with. And it still had an overall 21 Savage sound. But this one sound like the previous one, Savage Mode, the first one with the knife on the motherfucker in the heart, where you got the young <laughs> Savage while you trap yourself. So <laughs> like, it's it's so, the production is so creepy and, and slick minimalist at the same time. Yeah. It ain't really a whole lot going on all the time. Sometimes it's just like, kick, a snare, some weird sounding fucking sound in the background to make it sound creepy. Some 808s. And they would be like it. That's the whole beat. (laughs) (laughs) And it just go like that. And then you just let 21 Savage come on there and just kind of talk. And his little weird tone that he be using. (laughs) That's that's the song right there. You ain't got no shit else to it. 
But that's what I got from it, man. I, yeah. just, I really appreciated them taking that sound. And um, like Steve said, it's perfect for the fall. It yeah. sounds great for October, which I think 21 Savage was born in October. Oh, yeah. We got to look that up. I got to look that up. I was going to say Shit, random fact. October, baby. What's random up? Random fact. Random fact. Because <laughs> hey, he said it on like R.I.P. Love on yeah. that song R.I.P. Love. He was like, uh, what do you say? Rest in peace, love. And then he was like, October something 1992 to whatever, 2009. <clears throat> so apparently he ain't been somebody who was an advocate for love since 2009. So. Oh. Man, uh, October 22nd, 1992. Yeah. There you go. That's what's up. So what I'm is he still, saying there? Somebody died? Say? Or... No, no, no. He's not saying somebody died. He's saying that that was the last time he felt like he was in love with somebody. Uh, that's what that song is about. Is how he's his heart got broken since then. He's been bound to be savage. Oh, uh, okay. uh, yeah. I remember he got saying no love that. for nobody. He said something about yeah. all this excess. I can't remember the every time he. I got it. Oh, man, you brought that up. I got to remember that verse. I was like, hey, 21. That's what I'm gracious. saying. He got it. He got a lot of quotables in this moment yeah. too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can um, go back and be like, "That was cool." Yeah, <laughs> I'm wondering if people gonna uh, put out a shirt. You remember when he did? You know when he said, "It's a knife," and then next thing you know, everybody was like, "It's a, it's a everywhere." And yeah. then he dropped it. It's uh-huh. a album. I wonder if people gonna gravitate to that new ad lib, and then you're just gonna see these pussy <laughs> shirts everywhere. Pussy. <laughs> I can see that. Happen. <laughs> Uh, man, you bring You're gonna see a lot of people uh social media posts that be like pussy oh, and yeah, then, it's like gonna be the little quotation that say in 21 voice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh you bringing up Jeezy. Uh, I I'm glad you brought that up because I wasn't even thinking like if I go back to that old Jeezy feel, how it was like that this album gave me that feel. But the fact that you brought that, I was like, oh yeah, that's absolutely right, man. Absolutely. Yeah, because, yeah, man, I, man, I, I just really it's hope that wasn't a shot at energy, him. man. I, don't I don't really hope that wasn't. I didn't pick that up. I didn't. I pick think that up at all. Like, have some really good music together. Yeah, you know, it might, it but, might work that way. Yeah. Hey, who knows? Who knows? Um, last thing, guys, what's your final thoughts on this Twenty One Savage Metro booming Savage Mode Two? Man, uh. I'm going to be listening to it a little bit more. Yeah. To just kind of live with it some more. Because like Steve said, I think I'll probably be listening to it for a minute. I'll probably be going back to it, saving it at least four or five songs mm-hmm. like to my little weekly playlist <laughs> that I'll be listening to anyways that I've been updating. Because you know how at the end of the year you get your Apple or Spotify list of songs that yeah. you listen to the most. Mm-hmm. Once they started doing it, I started making my own like year list. Because yeah. I have a running year list <laughs> from songs that I've heard this year because I want to compare and contrast and see if they right or wrong. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my only thought. Just I'm going to keep listening to it. Yeah. What you got, Steve? Final man, thoughts man. on this 21 Savage. Man, it's just, it's just fire, man. Period. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of stuff that I want some answers to. Uh, <laughs> I know it's not none of my business. Like, like when he... Uh, dated Amber Rose for that minute. Like, I don't even know if they still he together. Did, like, didn't he? we don't have a clue if they still he together did. or not. But with him talking about, you know what I'm saying, his love life on the album, it's like, oh man, like, what happened there? Like, you know, because he was even, he was even at the slut walk and everything. Like, he was out yeah. there, you know, supporting, supporting his lady and, and enjoying it. So, like, it, it gives uh-huh. me, like, I love it because it gave me another side of 21 that we weren't going to see. So, I definitely love the growth, the, uh, the um aspiration the the what's the word uh the willingness to to move forward and try something because mm-hmm. you know uh this could have been he, he, if you want to try this he wouldn't have a number one album yeah so i always give it up for the folks who who try something even trying even however they got to trying to get morgan freeman because they got it <laughs> Right, uh, <laughs> which is amazing. Jeez, right. So, man, like I have, um, and this ain't a brag on both, but I have three cars. Uh, one is my wife's truck, which is the road. The other one is the BMW. 
W535. And the other one is my Dodge Challenger, which is turned into my project car because I want to do something with it. So anytime, yeah. anytime I'm, I'm, so depending on the mode or the feeling, like sometimes I want to listen to stuff in the BMW, like older stuff to be like, man, I mean, when I was listening to this and the Crown Vic or uh, the the photo Cutlass or the Monte Carlo I had, I was like, I mean, when I was listening to this, wishing I could get to this BMW, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember uh-huh. there was stuff in, in the challenge that I was wishing, to, you know, just to, to uh, that I was listening to, wishing to get to, you know what I'm saying, working to get to that next level. But the crazy thing was, I was headed to the barbershop when I put it in and just so happened I jumped in a challenger. And uh, you talking about a feeling it put me in, like it was the reverse. It was like, dang, this is how this felt when I used to drive this car like all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it made me think <laughs> yep. of like, man, I remember when I was driving the Crown Vic and I used to use my one finger to turn that big old wheel <laughs> uh, riding in the, in, in the, in the Cutlass and you know what I'm saying? We got out of, we might be spending like oil, but you know what I'm saying? We, we, we was, <laughs> hey, we was rolling and it, it took me backwards instead of me riding in like the BMW, like, dang, man, I worked hard to get to this moment. It took me back to like, this is how I used to feel. Like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? More of that, like, I ain't forgot where I'm from type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, man. Yeah. Yo, 21, man, keep it up, man. That's all I'm going to say, man. This, 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 this right here was that <laughs> one. Please keep it up. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, keep right. it up. So that that's my final thoughts on it. Yeah, uh, shout out to Twenty One. Shout out to Twenty One, man. I'm gonna give y'all my final thoughts on the album. Um, from my standpoint, man, I wasn't looking for it at first, but once it once I saw the trailer, I was like, yeah, I gotta <laughs> listen to it. You know, um, <laughs> uh, like man, you you find like the beautiful thing about this album is you see the growth. Um, you're able to like. More so now we're talking about what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? How he's saying, how he's how is he presenting his stuff? You're seeing the um, like I said earlier, the confidence in in his in his music because we're we're hearing him sing more, like because on that Drake album uh uh song, the song with Drake, he was singing on that, you know. Um, so I paid attention to that more. It was like, damn, he's singing. You know, with Drake, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, you, you're, you're like he has a a like a classic voice, a distinct voice, anyway. Um, but you're you're hearing a lot of stuff from him, and uh, just him partnering up with uh, Metro again, um, it's just amazing. It's just an amazing partnership between them two, and you get to see that um, sprout into something great. So. Um, Honestly, man, this one, like you said, G, I'm going to be listening to this one for a while. Um, and it's always going to be in the rotation. So um, shout out to 21. Shout out to Metro um, for this album, man. I appreciate it. I'm always grateful and thankful for artists putting out art, um, you know, giving us something as the consumer to consume. Um, so I appreciate their art. Keep up the work. Um, keep growing. Keep getting creative. And uh, yeah, so that's my thoughts on that. Um, everybody else that's listening, watching, please give us your thoughts on this 21 Metro Booming Savage Mode 2 featuring, I got to say featuring, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> uh, let us know what your thoughts are on this album, man, because it's a, it's a, an amazing album. And, and on top of everything, it's number one. Uh, projected to be number one, right, Steve? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And um, it's coming out after a week of uh, the, like the week before we had so many albums coming out, and then like it, this one comes out, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, it's huge. So let us know what you guys think. Um, comment if you're watching it on YouTube. Comment down in the section below. Um, comment on our Instagram. Wherever you you know, can contact us, contact us, let us know what your thoughts are. Maybe we missed something. Maybe your favorite song was a different favorite song. I want to hear it. So, um, but all that said, I want to thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Speaker Geekers podcast. Um, I am Tommy T. You can find me at on Instagram at I am Tommy T the third. 
You got G on Instagram at instantly underscore G. And you also got Steve at the great Steve O Steve on Instagram. You can follow the podcast on Instagram and Facebook at Speaker Geekers Podcast for both platforms. And then on YouTube, follow us or subscribe to the YouTube channel at Three Out Media Studios um, on there. Also, what else? Am I missing anything? Did I miss? I got everything. I always feel like I'm missing something, or I want to say something extra, but it never. It's never anything extra there. So, um, yeah. So, um, do y'all have anything? Are y'all good? Hey man, shout out to everybody that's coming. We <laughs> we see your comments. Yeah, we, we see, see your comments. We see uh, Did we have another one? We had one, didn't we? Yeah, we got one. We had one. Yeah. That, yeah, keep commenting, man. You might just get featured on the show, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And Don't the comment, it. I'm, ch- I'm chill. I'm looking for it. <laughs> Find it quickly. No, uh, <laughs> I thought you had this already, man. man yeah. I thought I did too. No, it's no, I ain't had it jump ready, man. I thought I had it too. I thought I did too, Damn. man. Shoot, no. Let me see, can I find it real quick, man? Man, let me just pull up the damn YouTube. That's what <laughs> look. That's what I'm going to right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just pull up the YouTube page. Up the that's YouTube. the easy way. All just right. go there. So from last week, from uh, one of our videos from last week, we had a a person. Um, I'm pulling it up now, so just bear with me for a moment's time. Um, yeah, that's not it. Uh, let's see. I think this is right here. Oh, yeah. oh, the filter is on. That's why. Okay, so um, here we go. Here we go. The truest wrote um on our video um how Lupe how the Lupe and Kendrick debate affects rap in 2020. He wrote or she. I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but. They wrote, I can listen to Lupe's uh, fans talk about Lupe all day. I love when someone else hears the stuff I hear when listening. That Mayweather comparison was dope. Lupe is the sweet science of rap. Good dis- good discussion other than old buddy that's not a Pac or Lupe fan. That's two of my top three with Andre 3000. I'd never pass him the ox to the <laughs> pass the ox to fam in the whip so <laughs> <laughs> so that is too funny man the truest I appreciate you commenting um hey I'm fine with that don't pass me the ox because I'm actually I'm bluetoothing things now in my whip um cause I <laughs> installed my uh my uh little flex <laughs> little flex little flex little flex, flex. but uh yeah. no nah, man I'm fine with not getting the pa- the arts core because I like to listen to what y'all listening to, you know. Maybe I'm not up on it. Maybe I missed something. So that's mm. that's the beauty of uh, of that, you know. Different flavors, different. You a real one for that, man. Different you a real one for that. What you mean? It's the truth. Yeah, for you know what I'm saying. You a real one for being like, hey, I want to hear what y'all listening to. Yeah, man. let me see what's going on in y'all. Work. For sure, man. It's so much. Everybody stuff I ain't like that. It's so much stuff I miss, yeah. man, because I be in my own bubble. Like I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a dude that you know. I had got, I bought them twelves from Steve when I was what 16, 17 years old. Yeah, something only like that. thing I wanted was something that was gonna shake my mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, <laughs> if it didn't move my mirrors, man, I wasn't trying to listen to it. So, and I'm still that same way, man. But now I got a little bit better with with what I choose to listen to and stuff. So. I appreciate that. The truest, I appreciate you. Keep commenting. Keep watching, man. We appreciate it, man. Um, If that's it, did you guys want to say anything? All right. So with that being said, guys, (laughs) I am out. Peace. Peace. Peace.